And ladies and gentlemen, we are here at Keefe Tech. Got through all of our technical difficulties over the last couple of meets, and that's good. It is January 7th, Monday evening, 5 o'clock, 7 o'clock. Hopkinton, it is senior night. Hopkinton will be honoring its seniors here this evening. And uh, myself and uh, Raj Rajanigan on camera will be announcing. And uh, as we get prepared for senior night here at Keefe Tech, it's uh, a little bit colder outside. It's about time. And uh, as we prepare and get ready for the meet tonight, uh, as I said, it's senior night. Tonight's Tri-Valley meet, a co-ed meet against um, Dover Sherborne. There we go. Had to double check. A little brain cramp there. It must be my excitement because in a little while joining me in the booth, it's a, a voice and a name that you're all familiar with. I'm not going to introduce him yet, but shortly we'll tease it out. And in a little while we'll be joined in the booth when we start for this uh, Tri-Valley meet. Hopkinton enters 3-1 and one in the Tri-Valley. Uh, we will find out what um, Dover Shoreborn's uh, record is coming in. But uh, we're looking forward to a good meet tonight. We're getting ready to start in a few minutes. We're going to sign off. And shortly we'll have two of us in the booth, a couple different uh, voices tonight. So that'll be good for everybody. So we'll sign off now for a couple of minutes and we'll be back shortly. Did you know there are other ways to reduce your pain besides taking medications? For example, mindfulness. I'm Dr. Mike Guidi, family medicine doctor based in Essex County. I use mindfulness techniques with my own patients during office visits, and I'm here to tell you how you can prevent addiction. It is a way to train your brain to manage pain. Reducing your pain through mindfulness could mean you need less medication or a safer type of medication. It can also help you reduce your stress and recover from past trauma. That means you become less likely to develop an addiction, whether opioids, alcohol, or any other substance. In brain research, we scan people's brains before they start practicing mindfulness and after they've been practicing it daily for eight weeks. We see actual changes in the way their brains are wired. We see those people drawing more on their judgment and reasoning skills, resulting in safer behaviors. Massachusetts has great resources about effective mindfulness techniques. To find out more, go to massmed.org. Look at that. The red light, you know, you're supposed to know when the red light comes on. So here we are back at Keefe Tech. I know we teased it out just a little bit, but um, getting ready to start the, the uh, Dover Shoreborne meet, Tri-Valley meet. And I am pleased to announce I am joined in the booth by none other than uh, Kenny Powers. If you've seen Eastbound and Down before, uh, look up for the camera. Is that Danny McBride? Do we have a, do we have a, look at that, Danny McBride. No, no, no. For those of you who know him, coach of 21 years. Pillars program, joined tonight by Brian King. Coach, welcome back. Good to see you. Uh, this is great. Thanks for uh, letting me be here tonight, Kevin. Well, we're glad to have you on board. Everybody that's been watching these things, and my audience of three, uh, has been uh, looking forward to having another voice up here in the booth. So we're glad to have somebody else up here. Raj is on the camera for us, so what we're going to do is turn it over as we get ready to meet. Coach, what have you been doing for the last couple of years? Obviously, uh, not an exercise regimen. No, I've been taking things easy and taking the uh, non-coaching route. I've uh, joined the ranks of officiating, so I've been able to see a, a lot of swimming, uh, high school and college, a lot of uh, my friends who are coaches out there seeing their teams. And uh, when the meet's over, I'm able to leave and not really stress like I used to. There you go. That's true. Well, it's, it's uh, good to just see, you know, that taking it easy regimen looks like it shows, so that's it good. Of course, then again, those in glass houses shouldn't throw stones, right? Luckily, you said that. <laughs> I'm sure it was coming my way. And I am here to try to work on Sweeps Week, by the way, okay? <laughs> yes, we, we understand that HKM is running Sweeps Week, so we're going to get ready to put our first swimmers in the uh, in the pool tonight. 200 medley relay. Hopkinton's going to be swimming the lanes 2, 4, and 6 this evening. Uh, Dover Shoreborn is going to be countering in lanes 1, 3, and 5. This is a co-ed meet, so we're going to have both men and women swimming together. A uh, combination as we get ready. Hush crowds. The uh, hush, hush falls over the crowd. Lane one's going to be on the bottom nearest to the stands. Lane six on the opposite end of the pool. Typically, teams are going to put their better swimmers in the middle of the pool. So that's where you usually see most of these races shake out. So as Hopkinton sets out, they're going to put Lane two closest to us is Colin Fine, center of the pool, Mayor Lauren Burke, and up top in lane six, Kate Legassi. 
This is going to be 50 yards each of backstroke, breaststroke, butterfly, and freestyle. Hope I got the order right. That's right. And uh, Dover Sherman has a, a freshman this year. I, I'm not sure her last name. Her first name's Ava. And you're looking at her right now in the middle of the pool. And like anything on these relays, there's, there's definitely strengths and weaknesses. So even though the Hillers are down right now, you're going to see their breaststrokers, which is one of their strengths. It's been one. Sorry to talk over you, Coach. That's true. It's been one of the areas of strengths. We've got Alex Matsukas in lane two, Sam Cody, and Allison Fu up in lane six. So those are the three top breaststrokers. Alex last year in the States finished in the, in the scoring with one of the best times in the program. And he already made up that space. And here comes Sam as well. So Hopkinton takes over quarter body length lead as we go into the butterfly. Hopkinton sits right now in first and third in the pool now. Close as us, Tyler Holbrow, Aditya Duda in lane four and turning it over in lane six. That's Kaylee Cohen. Closest to us, it's a race in the center of the pool. Dover Shoreborn, half a body length lead. That's Tyler Holbrow chasing Aditya Duda, closing up. This is gonna come down to the final swim here as Hopkinton's gonna rely on Ansley Worrell in lane two, Blake Reiner in lane four, and Connor Murchie up top. Dover Shoreborn out in the middle of the pool, being chased by Ansley Worrell. Blake Reiner close behind. Hopkinton right now sitting in second and third, seeing if they can grind something out here. Dover Shoreborn looks like they're going to cruise with the two body length lead right now. And it's that. not that bad with the scoring uh, eight for first, four for second, two for third. You know, you come out of the first event, you're only down two. Good showing by Hopkinton. Ainsley Worrell, Blake Briner going two, three. Dover Shoreborn takes first, fourth. And still in the pool up top in lane six, that's Connor Murchie, the merch man. Yeah, Merch has been a staple for a few years in the program. Really, uh, every time he's in the pool, gives it his all. So, it, like we said earlier tonight, it is senior night. Going to be recognizing the seniors at, uh, at some point during the meet. Swim or swim down, take a little break. That's always a, uh, a nice uh, send-off for the seniors, for some of these parents. It's their last child coming through the program. For some of them, it might be a first or a second or the only child going through a program. So, a nice little, uh, nice little send-off for senior night. Yeah, with a roster of 48, uh, Hopkins looking to graduate 17 kids, and a lot of them have been here for four years. Uh, this program's been traditionally uh, has kids that come in as a freshman, and they'll stay for four years, which is a great tradition. Uh, it's bittersweet when you say goodbye to some great kids. And you've seen a lot of kids over your 21 years, Coach. So I look back at the record board, and there are some records back there from uh, from the early 2000s, and uh, you know, that means you've been watching some of those races. Yeah, they're, they're, just when you think you can't get faster, some kid comes in and all of a sudden pulls it off. This is going to be a second heat. Glad you said that. I was just getting ready to announce the 200 freestyle. So we've got a heat number two for the 200 meter relay. We're going to have Tori Fisher in lane two, Kevin Gu in lane four, Leah Patrick in lane six. Good opportunity for some of these younger swimmers to get in the pool. Second year coach Jeb Libby took over the helm two years ago. Karen Terry still by his side. She's been here for pretty much the dawn of time. So Jeff, uh, Jeff was a sprinter out of Natick, graduated in 2007. Uh, really had a great career as a high school sprinter. And uh, came back coaching the Natick girls team as an assistant three years ago and started with me before I left. And uh, he's really stepped right in has a real good mastery of, of strokes, events, preparedness. Uh, it may not be as animated as myself, so that's one <laughs> thing I'm not going to check off. I'm not sure that that's a bad thing, though. Um, and that could be why the, uh, the LBs may be a little more than we'd like to say. Um, that's right, you're not running up and down the sidelines. No, nah, that, that was exercise. <clears throat> let you know who's in the middle of the pool right now. That's Deidre Belger out there in the breast group, closest to us in lean two, Holly Burns. And Sierra Slushel up there in lane six. Slushel moving herself in her relay in the second position. Yep, and Sierra, uh, a senior here. And, you know, these, these second heats are important because it does count as a time. It does count as a swim for each kid. Some of the uh, second heats of the individual events, if a kid makes a qualifying time for the postseason, it still counts. Even though they can't score points, it still counts as an official swim. Yep. So center of the pool in lane four, that's Marina Gianzana. Gianzana, Sophia Luce up in lane, or closest to us in lane two, and up top, 
That's Olivia J. So Hopkinton still holding the lead out in the center of the pool. Marina Giazana. Olivia J. holding on to second place, being chased down. And now moving herself into fourth position close as us is Sophia Luce with a nice swim on the fly. Hopkinton hands it over in the center of the pool. Beatrice Bonacher. Olivia J. turns it over to Aya Baba. So Hopkinton right now in the second heat going 1-2. And actually in third position as well, Mia Carboni moved her, her relay in the second lane. One of the things that we talk about, Coach, a lot of times is the depth of the Hopkinton team, about 50 swimmers, as Bonacher is going to bring it in for the easy win in lane four. Mia Carboni puts her relay in lane two in the second position. Hopkinton sweeps up top, that is Ayababa. Good swims by the young swimmers. We talk about when we get to the dual meets, it's a little bit hard because of the, um, the nature of the way the Tri-Valley with both men and women swimming together. But in the league championship meet, Hopkinton's depth really becomes a big, a big factor for their, uh, for their team and their points. Yeah, you really, you really have to have the numbers and even some of the non-league meets where you, you do swim separate girls, separate boys. Uh, Dover Sherman this year has their biggest team uh, in record. The, the coaches are, are veterans. Uh, they've got some real strong core kids. Not as enough depth, I don't think, as Hopkinton we're going to see coming up here on this next event. Um, but they have uh, only a few kids less than the Hopkinton team we saw in that second heat. There were three lanes represented by Dover Sherman. Absolutely. And it was one of those things I noticed that coming in, you did mention the biggest team ever. This is the, the largest um, opponent that Hopkinton has faced right now as far as numbers. So um, looks to be an interesting, uh, an interesting meet tonight. Should be pretty close. We'll keep an eye on the score. We've got a couple of friends down there on the uh, scores table. Well, well, luckily, Kev, I'm here to keep score for you, too. Oh, there you go. Look at that. Multitasking. My job is an official. Could you uh, get a watch on this, too, for us, maybe? Yeah. You know, get a couple of, make yourself useful over there. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> We're going to get ready for the 200 freestyle. we got eight lanes, eight laps of freestyle. Hopkinson's going to put out in lane two, Alyssa Fish, Alyssa the Fish Fisher, Zach Holbrow, and Grace Cavanaugh. Zach Holbrow in the center of the pool, 200 and 500 swimmer. Alyssa Fisher as well, 200 and 500. Grace Cavanaugh as well, 200 and 500 swimmer. Six across as they take the first turn. Holbrow, center of the pool, Fisher and Cavanaugh. Zach is just a workhorse. He has that same speed, whether he's doing a 50 or a 500. Grace, real methodic, very strong. And uh, the young fish is. Uh, kind of complement those two uh, seniors really well in this race. Absolutely. So Hopkinton challenged in the center of the pool by Dover Sherborne. Hopkinton three across with Alyssa Fisher close as us, Zach Holbrow in the center of the pool, and Grace Cavanaugh up top of lane six. One of the things I always talk about when I watch Zach Holbrow swim is he's a grinder. The guy just, just plugs away and grinds. So right now, about a half a body length lead, they take the turn after the first hundred. Holbrow in the center of the pool with a slight lead. Hopkinton sitting in both third and fourth. That's Alyssa Fisher close as us and Grace Cavanaugh as well. Yeah, you'll see, uh, you know, Zach may have a few more strokes than the Dover Sherman girl next to him, but his efficiency is a little bit better. And uh, if you notice, he's trying to get on the other side of his lane. This girl's trying to capture a little draft off him on the lane line. And uh, Zach's not going to give it to her. And he's going to try to take her in his last 50. So we turn for the last 50, Holbrow, Dover Sherborne, neck and neck. Watch Zach Holbrow in the center of the pool, try to grind this one out, see what he's got left. Alyssa Fisher close to us in lane two. Grace Cavanaugh up in lane six. So Hopkinton sitting pretty in both third and fourth. They now hit the same time. Battle. It's gonna be a battle for the sprint coming in. Holbrow, Dover Sherborne, center of the pool. Holbrow, Dover Sherborne, Zach Holbrow. By a low, Zach Holbrow. I don't want to call that. I wouldn't want to call that either. My guess is. And I'm certified in calling it. <laughs> I think that's going to go tie as Hopkinton goes Alyssa Fisher and Grace Cavanaugh. You know, this is where having a, having a timing system would uh, be running really well. That looked really close. Zach went a 2 double O. Both the girls for Hopkinton came in at 208, which are great swims. Uh, one thing Zach did at the end there is he didn't take a breath every stroke. Yeah, coming in. Tried to grind down, uh, definitely hit the wall tight. We'll see if uh, how it plays out here. 
Good looking swim by Zach Holbrow, challenge in the center of the pool. Nice freestyle, and that's a great time turned in. That, um, if Zach won a uh, two double O uh, for the young lady in the center of the pool, that's a state qualifying because she was right there with him. Definitely, and uh, the officials are right now trying to, what will happen here without the electronic timing is each official makes their determination of what the places were. They'll confer, and then they'll go to the watches. Um, so we really don't know what the, the official outcome is yet. Uh, we'll see if uh, Kev, your spies on the ground can get us some intel here. Yeah. I'll uh, work on that. Yeah, we'll see what we can find out. That's an important one. The interesting thing is, uh, th from up here, that looked like as, as close to a tie as you could possibly get. I would have called that a tie. So we'll see if... Uh, well, they're still conferring. This is like the NFL uh, referees this weekend. Hopefully they can get it right, because the NFL got nothing right this weekend. Nah. It was a fumble, but nobody recovered, I guess, huh? Yeah, I never heard that rule. Yes. Anyways, as we have a little bit of a break here, uh, let's get ourselves keyed up for the 2IM. We're going to see the other Fisher. It's going to be Abby Fisher. The other Holbrow, that's going to be Tyler Holbrow and Ritesh Rajanigan up there swimming the IM in lane six. So Coach Libby front end loading his races a little bit, putting his best, his best team out. He knows he's got a meet on his hand tonight as we are uh, out for the two IM. That is two laps each of um, butterfly backstroke, breaststroke, and freestyle. Center of the pool, Hopkinton challenge. That is Zach Holbrow, or Tyler Holbrow challenged by Dover Shoreborn. Up top, Ritesh Rajanigan fighting for third position. Closest to us, that is Abby Fisher. They take the turn. So in the, in the IEM, you, you see it in the Olympics when they talk about Phelps. You know, each, each swimmer has their strengths. Phelps definitely was not a breaststroker. Uh, clearly, the Dover Sherman kid is a, is a good flyer. Uh, you're going to see Ritesh come back on his backstroke, uh, one of his uh, better strokes. So there's a lot of movement during this race, depending upon the strength of each kid. So right now, Hopkinton sitting in third and fourth. Ritesh Rajan again up in lean six. That's Tyler Holbrow in the center of the pool. Tyler Holbrow, good breaststroker, also a good freestyler. So Dover Sherb 1-1-2, one, one, Hopkinton 3-4-5 is closest to us. That's Abby Fisher. So Ritesh Rajan again, Tyler Holbrow trying to close the gap here in the breaststroke. Holbrow trying to make a move and also probably come down to the freestyle. Both Ritesh Rajan again and Holbrow good So I know, the, I know the girl in five, that's that freshman from Dover Sherburn. And she's one of the best of the league this year. And uh, Alyssa F Abby Fisher, who's really been strong for four years, has been one of the top IMers. And you can see where she is in relation to this new girl. Absolutely. That's what happens, you know. In with the new blood, churn over. And uh, not that Abby's not swimming well, it's just this girl's really strong. Yeah. So in the turn going into the last 50, we've got Tyler Holbrow trying to chase down Dover Sherborne in lane five. Ritesh Rajanigan has himself planted clearly in fourth position. Dover Sherborne's gonna win this going away in the center of the pool. Tyler Holbrow seeing that he's got in the tank if he can catch, but that's a lot to make up. So it looks like it's gonna be Dover Sherborne one, two. Tyler Holbrow in the center of the pool taking third. Ritesh Rajanigan will take fourth. Uh, unless Abby Fisher touches him out at the end here. Uh, that's going to be close. 222 for Tyler, and uh, the last two Optimus swimmers about 227. Good race across. You know, and even though Dover Sherber went 1 2 on that, assuming we may have gotten second in that last race at 2 3, it's still only a four point meet with Dover Sherber leading. And uh, one of the strengths of Hopkins uh, is their sprinters. So we're going to get ourselves into the 50 freestyle. This is not a time to go up and get something to drink because this is going to be over in about 24, 25 seconds. Hopkinton's going to put their first group out. We're going to have four heats of the 50 freestyle, which again gives you an idea of how much depth Hopkinton and probably Dover Shoreboard have as well. In this first heat, we're going to see closest us in lane two. That's Blake Briner. Aditya Duda in the center of the pool in lane four and Mary Lauren Burke up in lane six. See how this team of this group uh, 
fares against Dover Shoreborn. This will be a quick race. 53, yeah. I've always said, Coach, is about the start and the turn. It, it is so about technique. You can be the fastest kid in the water, but if you can't get off the block and off the wall, it means nothing. So all those little technical aspects of it is the Kelly Pierce, our head official, is over by the uh, scores table just going through. Looked like we had a close touch out there for third and fourth between Abby Fisher and Ritesh Rajan. Again, they're probably just trying to get the places right. Make sure that everybody's on the same page. Our thanks to Kelly Pierce and Pete Foley on the other side of the pool. Two of the two of the best officials yeah. in the Eastern Mass, uh, Kelly Pierce from Wayland. Uh, her girls have had a great career in high school and college. Yeah, I was over at uh, when we were at the Wayland meet. I was looking at the record board. Pretty much the Pierce girls, both Molly and Megan, wrote that wrote that record board. So we get ready for the 50 free. Beat number one. Blake Briner, Dietrich Duda, Mary Lauren Burke. Good clean start. Closest to us is Blake Briner in the pool pretty quickly on the dive out. Briner with a small lead over Sherborne chasing there. Six across at the turn. Blake's Mary got Lauren the wall Burke. first, and he comes off with a great turn. Good turn in lane two. Seeing what we can do, Aditya Duda chasing down Dover Shoreborn, a 1-2 here would go a long way. And he sees him, he's breathing right into him. He knows where he's got to be. Aditya Duda, nice swim. That's Mary a Lauren big Burke swim. takes fifth. Hockey goes 1-2-5. Really nice swim up there by Aditya Duda. We'll come back to that. That could be big. So Briner takes first, Aditya Duda takes second. Dover Shoreborn third, fourth. And Mary Lauren Burke with a great showing up there in lane six, taking fifth place. Good so, swims. So even to, even though Dover Sherwood won two of the 200 IM, we come right back with a first second ourselves. Now Hopkins can go into the diving up by two, unofficially. So as we get ready for the second heat of 53, like I said, we're going to have four heats. This is going to see Peyton Salyards, Cassie White, and Tyler Fallon. Some good young swimmers. Nice core, the boys team. Uh, just a small group in the freshman side, I believe five or six. Uh, the women's side, uh, a little bit larger, about double all of that. So still a good feeder system into the program, Coach. That's yeah, it. I mean, there's still plenty of programs around between the Westboro uh, Swim Club, some of the other smaller programs, Milford Stingrays, that continue to feed in and keep the numbers sustainable and, and high enough to be competitive. So like we said, in lane uh, two, we got Peyton Salyards, Cassie White, Tyler Fallon. They're probably not gonna call a false start on that. In high school swimming, you do not get a false start. So you get back up. Clean start this time. Peyton Salyard's close. That's Cassie White. Nice start in the center of the pool. Three Hopkinson swimmers jump right out. That's Cassie White, Peyton Salyard, and Tyler Fallon. Good swims across right now. And Hopkinson's second heat. Quick turns, and they are all straight across the pool. Center of the pool, that's Cassie White. Up top, that is Tyler Fallon. Peyton Salyard's closest to us. It's going to be Cassie White, Tyler Fallon, Peyton Salyard's. Really, really good swims. You know, that's, that's almost a sectional cut. Um, as a second heat. As a second heat, and it would count for Cassie. That's great. So we're going to have one more. Two more. Two more heats. So I'm trying to do double duty here as I text and announce at the same time. This next heat is going to have Carolina Rus uh, Rusman. We're going to have Olivia J in the center pool and Ayababa. Ayababa and Olivia J, part of the uh, 200 medley relays a little while ago. Both had good showings. So Rusman, J, and Baba. You know, again, you're going to notice Dover Sherwin's got enough kids here to 
keep putting up with the extra heats. Clean start. Center of the pool, that is Olivia J. Carolina Russman closes us and up top, that is Ayababa. Center of the pool, Olivia J. takes a turn first, followed by Ayababa. You know, a lot of swimmers over their career, Kevin, they started some of these heats as freshmen, and they'll look back as seen as in, when they're in the varsity heats. Remember, you know, what it took to get in those top heats. So lane one closest to us, that's gonna be Dover Sherborne, followed by Olivia J, Ayababa, Carolina Russman. So the swimmers will take themselves a little bit, a little bit of a break, heading down. The last of the 53 is gonna see Kayla McCann in lane two, Pierce Farrell in lane four, and Fletch, the catch Clark, is gonna be in lane six. You know, I keep asking for nicknames and, you know, pet names and things like that, Coach, and I'm not getting fed a whole lot of information this year. And you got to do what you got to do. I know. Just trying to find it out, you know. We may have to do a, uh, a special half-hour segment on the top I, ten nicknames <laughs> over the past years. Because I know we have some. I was actually in the stands the other night, and somebody was referring to Fitty Spence. Spencer Franklin lives on. Fitty Spence. Fitty Spence. <laughs> Probably one of my favorites. Coined by previous announcer Chris Cooney. Shout out to some of the previous guys, Andy Lukowitz. Chris Cooney gentlemen that have come before as we get ready for the uh, last heat of the 53. Clean start out in the center of the pool. Pierce Farrell with a good start. So that's Pierce Farrell, Fletcher Clark up top and closest to us is Kayla McCann. And you see some of these names, Coach McCann, you, you know, these are younger sisters and brothers of folks who have come before them. Top of said Fletcher Clark out with a little lead. We've yeah, seen this, a lot this, of generations of families come through. This has been a, a family program, not only in the way all the kids are together, but family members, brothers, sisters, siblings. Uh, I think there's four or five sets of siblings on the team this year, presently, and uh, it just continues on. It's, it's one of those places uh, where, they, where they, they want to be together, and I'm sure the parents are happy they're driving together, <laughs> not in two different sports. I will say that from personal experience, the one thing I liked about having four swimmers so far is they all went to the same spot all together. So as we're going to get ready for the diving, we'll take a quick little break as they ready the pool for the diving. We're going to see Jack Brennan, Brianna Taco, Tess Weather, Liam McGinnis, Nick Papalas all diving tonight. Roz, we'll take a quick break. We'll be back after the diving is set up. My name is Kurt. My name is Nina. I'm Gunny. I'm Haley. Hi, hi, Davis. Jake. We're the Hiller Volleyball Team. My name is Emma. My name is May. My name is Shelby. My name is Sophie. We're Al and Gal, and we love H Camp. I love H Camp. We love H Camp. And I volunteer for H Camp TV. I watch H Camp TV. And I love H Camp TV. And I love H Camp TV. We love H Camp TV. And we're back. Quick break. Now they've gotten ready for the diving. Dover Sherborne's going to put one diver out. But the one diver they're putting out there is a very, very good diver. So Hopkins is going to be challenged. So just a quick announcement by the head official, Pete Foley. Got to put on golf voices on it and turn our phones off. Hopkinton's going to put Nicopolis, Liam McGinnis, Brianna Taco, Jack Brennan, and Tess Weather. This dive probably starts off four and a half, five maybe. How about that average? So they're doing the required dive of the week, which is a reverse dive. Is that what they do? They, do they bring a reverse a, a dive in? 
per week? Each week it rotates. Gotcha. The five different categories. Liam McGinnis' first dive. So both Liam and Nick are going to be diving unofficially tonight. Jack Brennan began a talk on a test whether Great height. It's a little bit over on the entry. Four, five and a half, five and a half. So this diver for Dover Sheriff and Zach Lawrence. Zachary's first dive. One of the best of the state. Dive, we saw him warming up and, and he looked really strong. So let's see if he does that reverse dive to start out with. Oof. We're going to see some eights and nines that tonight, might be coach, aren't we? Yeah. 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 Yeah, that was that good. Good height, good off the board. Obviously a great entry. Yeah, uh, those reverse dives, it's hard, you know, you see some of the kids, they over-rotate a little bit. It's hard to keep your composure like that. So really good composure from that perspective. Jack Brennan with his first dive. Good looking dive too, just a little bit short coming in. Jack gets great height as well. Good. Nice dive by Jack. Jack, as we mentioned, is going to head up to Norwich. Dive. We're going to Taco's first dive. Saw she was on the end of the board. It kind of shot her off into the yeah. corner. It is from this vantage point. You can see the differences in the heights and the dives. And Nice dive by Nick. Four, four and a half, five. Nick continues to improve. He's gotten better and better as the years go on. Looks really good on the board. He a sophomore with two you know, senior boys. Liam McGinnis. Front one and a half. A little bit over on the entry as well. I think these guys are all a little jacked up here. They're, they're a little over rotation yeah. early on. Tessa's next dive. Just so that was a kick out a little bit early. That's uh, very unlike her. She's She's been very consistent this year, a little unlike her. I think they're missing having Jim Brainerd on the sidelines. Zach for his second dive. Two and a half subtles on. As good as that really looked, nice. he was actually short yeah, on that. Yeah, a little bit short of the entry. He was leading off the board. Okay, so on his first dive, he'll probably be a little bit disappointed with six and a half and sevens, but. Jack's going to do the first one. Position. Really good looking dive. That could be a seven. Six and a half, seven. Six and a half, seven and a half. There you go. Yeah, he may get a little far out, but with his height, and he really emphasizes the kick out. Yeah. Nice looking dive. Good scores for Jack. Brianna Taco up on the board. Brianna going to URI next year. Four with two, five, five and a half. So what happens here is the score is added up and multiplied by whatever the degree of difficulty. So this is a 1.6 degree of difficulty. It's a good looking dive by Nick. Might see some sixes on this. So they'll take 10 and a half, multiply that by 1.7, and then that'll be a score for this dive. Excellent. at the end of the board. 
nice looking dive as well. What's the most difficult, the highest degree of difficulty dive that, you, dive that you've seen over your career, folks? You've seen some good divers. There's a diver from Western right now doing an inward two and a half pike in 3.2. And I gave him a nine on it two weeks ago. Wow. Test weather up on the board. That was a real nice entry. She Very hit the nice. water. You see two judges. Normally they want to have three, usually a, a visiting coach. But if there's only two judges, they'll take the final score and multiply it by one and a half to get the actual score. I was going to say, they could have pulled a chair up for you. You could have jumped down in there. Oh, no. No, no. I'm, I'm okay with that. I'm actually getting pretty good at this. I think at some point I should be able to judge dive and coach. I've been watching this for a long time now. Uh, we sign up in the uh, fall. There you go. That See, was a real nice entry. That's, it. that's probably a seven and a half or eight easily. Uh, easily a seven or eight. See? Yeah. I'm right there, coach. I got it. I, I think I got it. Oh, well, we got two extra stand-ins right here. I know. I know. start to actually talk like I know what, what diving's all about. I really don't. Yeah, be careful. I know. A little knowledge is a dangerous thing, Jack. Real nice Good dive. Good looking dive. Good height. He's yes. set at the top. Same thing. Six six and and yeah, I was going to say. They want to see him a little closer to the board. Yeah. Three, three, Ran a taco on the board. That was good looking too. Kept a, a tight bit. line, yeah. just a little out of yeah. control at the end. Yeah. So Hopkins has been very fortunate over probably close to eight to ten years to have a quality diving program. And with Jack and Brianna and Lee, even this year and Tesco as a freshman, it's going to keep going for a couple of years. Next out at the end of the board. Yeah, you know, it really is something. I mean, you, you look across and we've got Juliana's not diving tonight. Hopkinton's got six divers they can put out there to some teams are putting one or two. Um, it really is good to see that just just uh, a lot of a lot of good numbers. So the name of the program is swimming and diving. Yeah, very true. It's still one event and it counts. And you know we always announce and, and say that you know even if uh, even if you're not taking first, if you're getting second, third, and fourth, you're going to win a meet. So so even here they're going to probably get second, third, and fourth. Right. That's going to be just as good as being able to take first place. Test weather. A little over rotated coming in. Good looking dive though. She gets good tight rotations. Really great spring off the yeah. board for her size. This is actually a really pretty dive. Probably one of my favorites. Back yeah. one and a half, one and a half. Yeah. Another seven and a half easily. And that's tough to judge because you're seeing it so quickly. Seven and a half, seven and a half. Uh, Kevin, you're right on board. I'm telling you, Coach, I've been I'd be out playing Mega Millions tonight <laughs> if I were you because you're, you're hitting every number right now. <laughs> what can I tell you? Jack Brennan to the end of the board. It was a real nice dive. I'd like to see a seven on that. Uh, easily, yeah. Score seven and a half, seven. Yeah. Probably could have gone a little straighter at the end, but boy, did he set that nice. Yeah. And that's something he's done over the past few years, tighten things up. Yeah. Green and Taco now on the end of the board. Nice layout. Back one and a half. Half twist. Judges scored six and a half, six and a half. Yep, that's still always going to happen. So when these guys go off to college and dive, they may do some three meter diving. 
which isn't much different, obviously, the height, but they'll do some of the same dives that you see here. Yeah. Nick with a back dive. Back dive, half twist. The same thing that you talk about, you know, the idea is to try to go more vertical than horizontal. Yeah, you want to you want to kind of get near the board on some of these entries, you know, and a lot of spectators focus on just the entry, how good it looks, but it's you're on the board right now. If you're looking at Liam, how he sets, he's going to get a few bounces. What he does on his takeoff, sets, props the legs, and that was a pretty nice dive. Very nice dive. Now, this is a very regulated event. There has to be uh, official sheets turned in. You've got to have uh, competent announcers that are uh, reading the entire score. That's very true. And uh, we're actually a couple of juniors down there giving it a good world here. They're much more composed than they have been in days past. So, uh, really nice. And very that's nice the advantage she has. Very tight entry. Yeah. Six and a half, six and a half. She's a little bit tighter to the board. That's a seven, seven yes. and a half all day long. Yeah, nice drive. Yeah, for the first time as I look across and Zach gets ready for his dive. Hopkins nearly matched in their numbers. Real nice finish on that. Yep. He brought his legs back around. Yep. Zach putting down some good scores. I don't know if I said it, but he's going. Uh, to Tufts to dive. Be a jumbo. Yeah. I won't say anything, Coach. You, you should, you're the lobbing me softballs here, Coach, with the jumbo talk. Just, I'll leave it be. Of course, like I said, glass houses. Yeah. Nice dive. Went over a little at the end. Just a little. Great height. And that's where that little bobble at the end didn't hurt him because he, he had a great height in it. Yeah. He's diving well it's, 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 as we've watched him just this year, just gaining confidence with every meet. Finished at the States last year, scoring in Division Two. Nice dive with Bjorn Taco there. Should be top eight at the States this yeah. year. And the Hopkins girls over the past few years. Yeah, they've had quite, have quite been a, uh, for, yeah. a staple in the postseason. Yeah. They really have. And you mentioned Coach Jim Brainerd. He's been with the program 15 years. Mm. And he is one of the best diving coaches in the Northeast. Presently coaching uh, college at Babson. Coaches Waltham High School. He's on a training trip with his college team. So he couldn't be here tonight. Uh, but what he does with a wide range of divers. You see some great diving here and some brand new divers, and he gets them all to be better. He really does. He's a colorful character too, Mr. So, Brain. Especially around the holidays. Yeah. Liam McGinnis. Back one in the layout. Half twist. But even though some of these dives aren't as flashy as everything else, you get get good scores on them, they build a little confidence. Test with her fourth. So you see she was short, she actually finished that dive at the level of the board or below it. So judges want to see the dive finished above the board, you drop it down. That's going to help you score in the future, Kevin, for some of those tougher dives. I'll have to watch that. It's good to get these. I got another year left to announce. I'll make, so some, I'll make some cheat cards for you. There you go. Mm. That'll be a seven. I guess it helps nice I'm a certified play. official, too, huh? That's true. And I'm just a guy. Yeah. You're up in the stands and you're right on par. So, yeah, I've got one year, one year left sitting in the stands and Elton. So, well, it's just going to be an opening next year, Coach. Just so you know. I think I just uh, like to come and hang out. And 
add color like Rowdy Gaines does. There you go. Back two. Oh, that's a nice dive going forward. If he can get sixes or sevens in the postseason, that's a ton of points. Yeah. Taco with the back one and a half. I like that our announcers, we can actually hear our announcers, which is good. They're gaining some more confidence. Yeah, they are composed. Not the chuckle fest that it's been in meets past. So the end of the diving. We're going to take a quick break, Roz, before we go to the break. Why don't you zoom across? On the back side, you can catch some of those posters that these kids of uh, underclassmen have put together for these seniors. As we said, it's senior night. Um, we will find out when we're going to do our senior program. That will be coming up shortly. As we honor all the seniors, Raj is going to fade us out before we take a quick break, get some of these posters as they get ready to continue the meet. Have you ever considered texting and driving? If so, you should know the consequences. If caught texting and driving for the first time, you could get an $100 fine plus your license taken away for 60 days. The consequences only get worse the more you get caught. Even if you don't get caught, there could be serious effects. You could get into a car accident and hurt yourself or someone else. Texting and driving is a very dangerous combination, so stop before this happens to you. So I want to thank you all for taking the time to come up tonight for the senior senior night. Um, I want to thank you for the evening. Um, the union put a lot of thought into it as well as preparing. So we can give a quick round of applause for those who helped out tonight. segue into senior night as we're going to have. So senior captain Jack Brennan going to be joined out. Oh, are mom and dad coming out or not? No, they may not be doing it, Dad. They may not be. Parents Kim and Tim Brennan. Probably. Parents, yep. Okay, so here we go. Well, he's still a rookie, Coach. I know. No harm, no foul. So we'll have parents coming down and joining the kids. So that was uh, Captain Jack Brennan. So one of the nice things about this tradition is, uh, you know, you get to see the parents uh, with their kids and all the time they put in with their kids over the years. And some of these parents have been here a few times before. You're going to see one parent who's gone through this twice. You yourself have gone through it a couple times. And yep. Next year, we'll uh, let the pigeons loose when it's your last time. <laughs> um, but, it's, you know, it, it is a, a bittersweet moment. You're, you're excited for your child. Some of these kids, you know, Jack is there, the first kid going off, and uh, next year, your last kid going off. Absolutely. And, it, you know, there's a whole wide range of emotions that go with it. Um, you know, you're obviously proud of your kid, anything that they do, and you're celebrating their, their success and their just being part of a, a program. and. and you know, looking over the list of the seniors here, uh, you know, usually we get a few seniors that came in each year that may be international students. It might be their first year. We have a but, couple. Yeah. But typically, you know, there's a lot of four-year swimmers. And to do any of these sports, I don't care what high school sport it is, for four years, yeah. that is just a grind. So Abby Fisher coming down, another senior captain. She's going to be joined by her parents, Jen and Phil. Like I said, we just had the Brennan family Kim and Tim joining their son, Captain Jack Brennan. Zach Holbrook, parents Heidi and Greg Holbrow. Sorry, Holbrook, Holbrow. 
I keep calling Zach Tyler, Tyler, Zach. So the whole Brow family, my, my continued apologies. Yeah, we got to get the kid on the announcer to slow down. Yeah, well, a little, over, a little over anxious. I know. So the next one coming through is Connor Murchie. They'll be joined by his parents, Liz and Bob Murchie. There we go. She slowed it down just a little bit. She'll wait for the pictures. That's good. So the Dolfino, Colin Fine, joined by his parents, Pam and Jim. Coach, it was interesting the other night as the Natick boys, as the boys were swimming against Natick, Sam Fine, Samantha was uh, one of the coaches, former swimmer at Hopkinton, captain as well. Yeah, she's worked with the Natick High School and uh, you know, it's great to have some of the former Hillers going off to other places, uh, taking what they've done. And uh, I know for the times, this is really an end of an era. This is their 12th year involved with the program. Yeah. That's incredible. So Brianna Taco, Captain Natalie, and Chris. Connor is uh, Colin Fine gets his picture taken. Bree's heading off to URI next uh, year. She'll dive there. So she's got some of the family, mom, dad, brother. Remember she came to Hopkins as a freshman. Beatrice Bont Bonitra. Joined by mom, Jackie. This is one of our senior uh, international students. We've got, uh, been lucky over the past couple years in the swim team. We've been able to capture the international uh, kids. And there are some swimmers out there that have helped over the years. There's Kavanaugh joined by her parents, Nancy and Neil Kavanaugh. Grace is gonna be swimming in California next year at Occidental. Signed and sealed, uh, great, great place to carry on, and uh, she's looking forward to swimming outside. Yeah, really, <laughs> which is one main difference. <laughs> we, we lose that around here. Sam Cody coming through. He's got the hair up in the man bun. Man bun Sam. He's going to be joined by Ruth Ann and Dave, his parents. Well, uh, here's another, my third kid coming through from the program, yep. and. Uh, Boy, this kid, his energy is infectious. Absolutely infectious. Um, so the Cody's happy, the last one of his family coming through. Yeah, hopefully these parents are real happy with their kids tonight. I'm just happy to say goodbye to swimming and all the trips to Keith Tech over the years. <laughs> so Marina Ginzana. She is an exchange student, as I understand. Is that correct? I believe so. Foreign student? Yeah, she wasn't on the team last year. Usually if they're 12th graders. Stephanie Capalis, Joanne and Spiro. And Mom Stephanie, and four year member of the team. Brother, sophomore, Nick, one of those uh, sibling combinations. It looks like they There's Sammy Tide. I still haven't gotten it right. I do the same thing. I go back and forth. It's the Kapalas family. Kaylee Cohane, she's going to be joined out on the uh, deck by her parents, Diane and Rob. Kaylee's had a quiet four years, but she somehow always finds herself in a race on an outside lane, plugging for a, uh, an important place, an event. Lost my place for a minute there, coach. I apologize. So next up. Ray Sunshine Lucas. Ray Sunshine Lucas. Joined also by his parents, Joanne and Ray. So we've got Liam McGinnis. He'll be joined by mother and father, Lynn and Bill. So 
So Liam came in after his uh, sister Mara graduated as a swimmer. Really come on great in the past three years as a diver for the program. I think he's really kind of, he and Jack are fed on each other off the board. I understand him. He's got an incredible sense of humor, is what I was told. Uh, I think, I'd say him and Fletch the Catch are probably yeah. twins. So, Carolina Rusman, Denise and Chris Rusman will join her out on deck. There are the Rusmans. And now to meet their daughter. Next up, Peyton Salyers. Wendy and Chip Salyer. Again, the, the third sibling. Yeah. Two oldest sisters have gone through. They, uh, they actually moved here from Japan four years ago, maybe five years ago, and uh, came onto the program. Sierra Slushel next up. Nancy and Drew. Parents. So Nancy is the Hopkinton ski coach. I I heard that recently. I heard that. One's on melted water, one's on frozen water. <laughs> the last of the seniors. Ansley Worrell. Colleen and Sterling Worrell. Ainsley missed her freshman season, had double so shoulder surgery, came back sophomore year with a vengeance. Just a staple of the freestyle events. A great teammate to have. Awesome work ethic. Dad works as a visual arts teacher at the high school. Bob works over at the Fay School of Technology. There's Price. And Sterling's behind the camera getting his picture taken. Normally he's out. out he's the front. one taking photos, exactly. And I'm wondering if the shirt is an indicator of where she's going. You never know. Is it? Look at you picking up on the subtle clues out there, huh? I, I, I see things. It's not your first rodeo, no, huh, Coach? No. And the one thing to, to say about these seniors in the past senior class, uh, Hopkins and Swimming and Diving, the GPA has been through the roof. They've been nationally recognized over the years. And a couple years ago, they were top 10 of the nation for the girls for the team GPA, which wow. is an unbelievable testament when they consider they're coming over to Keefe Tech multiple times during the week, different times, meets, keeping up with a busy academic schedule. Uh, some kids are, uh, many kids are in the band. And to be able to continue to, to put those grades up and typically swimmers, uh, they track them in college, they have the best GPA. You know, it's that individual sport, you gotta maintain uh, certain things in your life and, and prioritize and these kids embody it and they pass it on to the younger kids as well. There's a lot of time management, you know, certainly um, associated with getting yourself out of school over to Keith Tech for swims. Some of the swims this year have been a little bit later. Um, practices have been, in some cases, 8.30 to 10 o'clock at night um, just due to schedules and pool time. So. Um, yeah, it, it really does take an awful lot. It's a, it's a sport that's it's not like they're just walking onto a field or onto a court right after right after uh, classes end. So yeah, and it's it's also one of those sports and kids and I've obviously I did hockey for a long time, but I I've been coaching since 1990 when I did Natick, and to this day there are, there are people you know adults with their own kids who remember vividly carpooling to Keefe Tech. Are you worried about letting your child take the wheel? Maybe you should also be worried about what you're doing behind the wheel. Have you ever sent a quick text just this once? Well, that might turn into a catastrophic accident. Monkey see what monkey do. If you do it, why wouldn't your child? In a child's brain, almost all things their parents do, they can do too. 78% of teen drivers surveys text and drive. 59% said their parents do it too. Stop texting and driving, because if you do it, your child will too. 
We'll get the results of the diving now. Nice job by Nick. Nice score for Liam on senior night. In fourth place from Hopkinton, Lee with a score of 213. Brianna Taco takes fourth. In third place from Hopkinton, Jack with a score of 220.575. These are all just great scores. It tells you the competition. Jack Brennan, 220, takes third. Very close to Jack's scores, 221 for Tess Weather. And your winner tonight from Dover Server, Zachary, with a score of 309.60 wow. points. Just tells you the separation. Yeah, separation. Almost yeah. 100 points. And, and But if you're scouting Hopkinton, you got three divers over. Right. Two, 213. 4136. So there we go, 4136. Thank you, Coach. I still got it. We do. So we're going to get ready for the second half of the meet. The 100 fly closest to us. It's going to be Aditya Duda, center of the pool, Tyler Holbrow. And up top, that's going to be Sophia Luce. Uh, we're going to. They switched the lanes on that? They did. Oh, that so was a post production memo. I didn't get that. We've had a few of them where we are announcing men and swimming in women bathing suits and as the coach flips it up. So this is going to be the same fly that Dover Sherman had in the IM, but uh, that's the advantage of later in the meet. Now Tyler knows what he's got to do. So three men across right now. Tyler Holbrow, Dover Sherborne, and Aditya Duda closest to us, Sophia Luce up top. Those points are going to count. So Sophia, we're going to watch her holding on to fifth place. That's important. Right now, it's a race in the center of pool between Holbrow. Oh, he's Sherborne. got a great 75. Look at him bear down here for this last turn. Nice swim right now going by Keep Tyler Keep it tight Holbrow. underwater. Dover Tyler Sherman Holbrow. can't stay under a little bit. Tyler's got to get a kick going here. Bring it home, Tyler. Half a body length lead. Tyler Holbrow, Dietje Duda challenging for second. Holbrow, Duda trying, just going to run out of pool. Great swim by Hopkinton. That is a great way to come three. back. Really nice swim by Tyler Holbrow. This is not over in the fifth, sixth spot. That one point is critical in it every is. meet. Sophia Lewis is going to get just touched out as this really has come down to a, a meet of points here and there. There will be no second heat of the 100 fly. Go figure, huh? So we're yeah, not the kids aren't chomping at the bit <laughs> for that one. We're going to get ready for the 100 freestyle. Coach is going to put Grace Cavanaugh in lane two, Alex Matsukis in lane four, and Ray Lucas in lane six. So the second half of this meet after diving, Hawkinton comes out with a 1-3. Unofficial score, Coach. 50 to 43, and you want to just kind of Keep putting a little hurt on. You know, when you get some extra points, you do it. There's, there's 16 points available per race. If you go 8-8, eight, 9-7, eight, you know, you can still lose a little here and there, but you're not losing too much ground. I'm sure you've done that math numerous times. I've watched your magic over the years, Coach. Uh, it, is, it is scary coming, trying to predict. Yep, coming down to final races. And there's one relay in specific a couple of years ago. I remember it very, very well. There's kids on this team here who were part of that really. And I, right. I still watch that as one of the best in the program history. That was. So we'll get back and talk a little bit about that as we get ready for the 100 free. Lean two, Grace Cavanaugh, center of the pool, Alex Matsukas, and Ray Lucas up top. Let's see what Hopkinton's got for the 100 free. This is a pretty much all out sprint. Alex had a breakout year as a sophomore, placed in the States in breaststroke, and his stroke. He just attacks the freestyle. 
Watch him off the walls. Nice wall by Alex and also take an eye, keeping on Grace Cavanaugh in lane two. Ray Lucas looks strong up top at the turn, half a body length lead, center of the pool. That's Alex Matsukis. Hopkinton right now, one, three, four. Grace Cavanaugh gonna try to challenge for second as is Ray Lucas. We'll see what they've got. Let's see if uh, if uh, Matsukas can hang on. Good turn, last wall. He just looks 25. so high. Coming way off the wall. He's gonna try to swim this right through the finish, not give up anything here. He's Ray on Lucas about a 53 pace, and yeah, Lane Lucas up in the Lucas top. Lucas challenging up top. Hopkinton goes one, three, four. Good showing there by Hopkinton. Boy, I got Grace unofficially at a 58, which is a heck of a swim for her at this time of the year. And uh, that's going to be definitely a sectional cut. That's a sectional cut and just about a half a second, a second off of a, a half a second off or a second off of a state cut. So great swims there all around by Hopkinton as they go one, three, four, picking up some additional points. There will be another heat of the 100 freestyle. We're going to see Ryan DeLeva, younger brother of Andy DeLeva, Andrew DeLeva, in lane two. So Ryan DeLeva, Pierce Farrell, and Leah Patrick up in lane six. And uh, Dover Shorebone will counter with swimmers in lanes one, three, and five. So a full second heat here across the board. Pierce Farrell, Leah, Patrick. Clean start, good start in the center of the pool by Pierce Farrell. Brian DeLeva out to a fast start in lane two. Now the other advantage of these extra heats give a coach is when you're trying to build a relay at the end of a meet, you, you see what a kid can do on a hundred time and you put four of them together and you say, hey, here's what your time is. Uh, it makes them believe a little bit more and they sometimes do even better. Absolutely. Here's the Ryan Glove out to a nice, a nice start, followed closely by Dover Sherborne, Pierce Farrell, Leah Patrick. So the closest us lean to that's Ryan DeLeva, freshman swimmer. <coughs> Excuse me. Center of the pool, that is Pierce Farrell. And up top, that's Leah Patrick. Ryan DeLeva opening up his lead. Two body length lead in lean two. That's DeLeva. Ryan DeLeva. Pierce Farrell's going to challenge for second place. Let's see what he's got. He's pulling ahead if he keeps his head down and sprints to the finish. Pierce Farrell. Pierce Farrell into the wall. Takes That's second. how you finish. Nice job. Phenomenal. Did not give up. No. Well, you tell sprinters you swim through the finish. You don't glide into it. You swim through the wall. And uh, that's how you get a an extra place to drop a time here and there. Really good looking swim. That last 15 yards of Pierce Farrell in the center of the pool. Good looking swim. And Ryan DeLeva takes it wire to wire. Nice swim there. So we're going to get ourselves ready for the 500 free. It's a good time to go get a sandwich or take a bathroom break. This is going to be 20 laps of the pool. We're going to have five minutes watching this one. Hopkinton's going to put Alyssa Fisher to fish out in lean two. We're going to see Zach Holbrow in the center of the pool chewing up some water. And then up top, we're going to see older brother Andrew DeLeva up in lean six. So Fisher, Holbrow, DeLeva of the Andrew variety. Nice turnout here tonight on Senior Night as we look through the audience. We get a lot of folks. A lot of folks here. It's good to see all the parents out. Good turnout for a Monday night. Oh, looks like we're going to have a third heat. We don't have this because this is all Dover Sherborne. Uh, so we're going to have one more heat of the uh, of the hundred. So Hopkinton is up after that hundred free, sixty-one forty-eight. So a tighter meet. You wait for that one event where you can break out, and now you just want to press to the end. And high school meets, 94 is the quote-unquote magic number. Once you get 94, uh, you automatically, well, not automatically, but the team can't catch you. And you'll see scores not 
sometimes represent what the actual outcome of a whole meet was. Um, you know, in basketball and uh, a few other sports, they'll pull their starters towards the end. You can't really do that in swimming, predict what will happen. So what they'll do is they'll go non-scoring the last few events. And that doesn't mean the swim doesn't count, the time is good. It's just, you, you know, sportsmanship is, is a big component of every sport. And, you know, in some of these weaker teams, you don't want to run up the score. Uh, so once you get to 94, that's kind of, you know, you got the meet. Uh, and you can even tell your own kids if, if they're not scoring, you can apply what place they would have gotten towards their letter. Right. So uh, no one's really out of it. Just kind of the way to do things. So Dover Sherborne puts three swimmers out for the 100 as they come in. No Hopkinton swimmers in there. And now we'll get ready for the 500 free closest to us in the pool. That's Alyssa Fisher. Zach Holbrow in the center of the pool. And Andrew DeLeva is going to be up top. I remember a couple of years ago, I think it was at uh, the 500 that Zach Holbrow put down as a freshman. Dropped 20 seconds, I think it was, coach in the 500. Yeah, in he, the uh, regional meet. He really, meet. he really put uh, a heart. Actually, it was two years ago when he was a sophomore. Uh, at, the, at the league meet. Yep. And since that point, he has just been on a tear. He's got one of the top times in program history for the boys. Yeah. Uh, I think someone I know has a uh, 500 record. And it's, Still. Not, it's not you, Kevin Manassi, it's a different one. That's correct. But uh, nice. Zach, Zach is, you know, the quintessential distance kid. If he ever swam in college, a college coach would put him so in, in high school, this is the distance race. College, it would be the 1,000 free or, or 1,650. Yeah. And yeah. So he it looks like, I can tell right away, he's swimming against the same girl he swam against in the 200 free. Yep. Yeah. Uh, but I think over the course of this uh, 20 laps, he's going to wear her down. We got Little Fish here in two, and Andrew up in six, who's, who's also been a nice compliment in these yeah, distance races. Yeah, he has been. He has been. And you know, swimming is not about always winning. It's, it's what you can do as a team with three kids in an event. Well, that's one of the things that we do talk about from the scoring perspective is even if you're not winning a race, if you can go two, three, four, you're going to put more points down than a team that wins the race and then takes fifth. So, um, you know, here, Alyssa Fisher trying to keep herself right up tight. We've got three simmers across in the center of the pool. Hopkinton's got Alyssa Fisher and Zach Holbrow, and up top in lean six is Andrew DeLeva. So nice tight grouping in the center of the pool as they take their turn on lap number five. 20 laps of the pool, as we've said. The swimmers swimming from left to right and then from right to left. And there is a uh, strategy that goes into all of these races. And, you know, you don't know if Zach and uh, Fisher talked before like you know how they're gonna approach this girl and sometimes you have somebody go out as like the rabbit to tire them out and uh, let someone else come on that's that's truly unselfish sure. um, you know they've got her in a nice spot keeping her within range and you know they're probably all gonna play it out to where they take her to the last turn and try to sprint it out at the end really good looking grouping here in the center of the pool this is gonna be a fun race yeah, nice. this is really, really shaping up, and uh, they're out pretty quick. They're out a 208, 200. That is a quick. That's a quick 200. <laughs> well, for Ali, I think you can't do it, but that's a qualifying time for sectionals. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Center of the pool, Dover Sherborne holding on to about a half a body length lead, trailed closely by. Tyler, Zach Holbrow rather, and uh, Alyssa Fisher. So at the halfway point, you don't want to lose her. You want to stay as close to her, on her hip, maybe by her legs, and keep yourself in the hunt. I like to see uh, Alyssa stretch out her stroke a little bit. Yeah. She's picked up the pace on her stroke a little bit in lane yep. two, trying to keep pace with the Dover Sherborne swimmer. She's got about a body length lead. Andrew DeLeva holding himself clearly in fourth position up top in lane six. 
As Dover Sherborne in the center of the pool, about a body length lead on both of the hockey kids swimmers, Alyssa Fisher and Zach, or uh, yeah, Zach Holbrow. You know, if you're a loyal follower of these meets and you know, hearing Kevin's golden tones each uh, each meet, you know, you may wonder why sometimes these kids look a little faster or slower at certain times. Swimming is a is a long season. Kids' bodies really get tired, and, and coaches try to sometimes keep them under wraps until they get towards the end when they start resting them and what's called taper. You know, Zach is, Zach is a very strong 500 kid, and his times at the end of the season will be really stellar. He may just be at a point in the season where his body's not letting him take off yet. And, uh, you know, as a coach, you're watching it. You're okay with the meet. You've got second, third, or fourth here locked up. It's just... You know, swim certain things, make your turns, and uh, when it's time to go, it'll be time to go. And Kev will be uh, reporting that accurately. Lap number 15. So in the center of the pool, Dover Sherborne, she's opened up about a three or four body length lead. Now Zach Holbrow's making a push now. To see if he can close that gap down a little bit. We've got 100 left, so we are four-fifths. See how quickly I did that math, Coach. Four-fifths of the way there. It's not bad. I know. Alyssa Fisher and Zach Holbrow holding on to second and third positions. Andrew DeLeva up top is in fourth position. The bell lap is going to go to Dover Shoreborn in the center of the pool. She's probably got enough of the lead opened up that a little bit too much ground to make up. But boy, Zach Holbrow, he's going to give it a shot. Yeah, and she's going to probably come in with like a 5.30, which is a heck of a swim. Great swim. She has such a great form. And all three of these distance kids have great times coming. But you see three different ways to attack the race. So Dover Sherborne in center of the pool. She takes a turn. Nice long strokes. Smooth stroke in the 500. She's going to win it fairly easily. A valiant effort by both Zach Holbrow in the center of the pool and Alyssa Fisher. Zach Holbrow grinding it out. That's a 527. That's a great early season swim. It's a state qualifier by 12 seconds. Zach Holbrow comes in. 535. Just off the sectional cuts. And 540. Nice swim by Alyssa Fisher. She gives out herself a sectional cut. She missed sectionals by half a second. So those times will come down as the season gets going and you're not sure how many races they swum before this. And yep. Andrew DeLove up top. He's going to take four. So Hopkinton goes two, three, four. And from a points perspective, Alyssa Fisher feeling a little feeling it. So she misses states by about a half a second. By a half a second, makes a sectional cut clearly. She's up and out of the pool. Dover Sherborne two, with uh, two swimmers left in the pool, both on their final lap. Swimmers are going to sit tight. And this is, you know, this is one of the toughest events in high school swimming. It's the, it's two and a half times anything else. It's hard to train for. It takes a lot out of you. Uh, you know, you're talking about it really a couple of years ago. Zach came out of the 500 and he had to swim in that last relay. And he threw out the best split of his life. Yeah. Um, along with Abby Fisher. Grace Cavanaugh and uh, Greg the Man Ryman. Yes. Uh, who put on probably the best 100 split we've ever seen. That was a pretty impressive uh, swim that evening. evening. So we're going to the 200 free relay. Hopkinton's going to be in lanes two, four, and six. Going to have Ansley Worrell, Tyler Fallon, Ray Lucas, and Zach Holbrow, who just finished the 500. Anchoring the two free relay in lane two. We're going to have a teacher did a Grace Cavanaugh who just also finished the 500. No. 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 Uh, Grace Cavanaugh, Mary Lauren Burke, and Ritesh Rajanigan. And then up top in lane uh, six, we've got Cassie White, Peyton Salyards, Kevin Goons here, Slushel. So Cassie leading off up in lane six. She was in an extra heat of the 53, had a really good time earlier, may have qualified for the postseason. Now she can coming to this leading off. If you're a lead off swimmer in this relay, you can get a time and that can count. So it's like an extra bonus right. 50 yeah. to swim. Coaches will often do that. They'll put swimmers that are getting pretty close to cuts, put them in the first position. Of course, what am I telling you? You know that. You've done that before. 
Yeah, we've we try different things. You may see one of the Dover Sherwood relays here being all four boys. See if they can throw a time down. They're trying to get a time for the postseason. So Tri Valley League, you have to have at least one girl in every event and one girl in every relay. Um, but if you don't get too many non-league options, if you're trying to qualify for just the girls section of the state to boys section of the state, you lose opportunities. So Dover Sherman's given up the point opportunity here potentially, but yeah. the overall goal is, uh, you know, let's get these guys qualified. They know they're going to get pushed from the Hopkins kids. Uh, I think Dover Sherman understands where the outcome of this meet's going right now, and it's, it's a smart move coming into, you know, early January. If they make it, great. If they don't, it gives them a little benchmark to say, all right, guys, we're, we're right there. Absolutely. A little bit of a delay here, which is good. It's actually giving Zach Holbrow there in lane two a little bit of a break. He'll get himself an extra minute and a half for us. And so Hopkinton, lane two, Ansley Worrell, Deacha did and Cassie White. And it's not always bad to come out of the 500 to get into this because you're already cranking, your heart's pumping. I wouldn't go beyond a 50, though. No. Wouldn't be pretty. It loosened up. Center of pool, Dover Sherborne, Aditya Duda, Ansley Worrell, closest to us, lane two, being chased up top in lane six, it's Cassie White. Another good show by Cassie White up top. That's Aditya Duda in the center of the pool with Dover Sherborne touching the same clean start. That's Grace Cavanaugh, center of the pool, close to us, Tyler Fallon, and up top, that's Peyton Salyards. Center of the pool, it's a two, two race, two uh, lane race, that's lanes three and four. Grace Cavanaugh, Dover Sherborne. Grace Cavanaugh with a good looking swim and here. She's going to that new windmill style, you know, get the arms around Straight quickly. On. She's a sprinter. Great technique. Grace Cavanaugh is going to turn over to Mary Lauren Burke. Mary Lauren Burke, Kevin Goo up top and closest to us. That's Ray Lucas. ML Burke, sprinter, came on the scene as a freshman. She's a really good swimmer. A lot of fun with her, ML. She's holding her own there in lane four. That's Mary Lauren Burke, Kevin Goo up top, and Ray Lucas closest to us in lane two. Hopkinton currently sitting in second position, but remember this is an all-male relay in lane three, so they are not going to count. So Hopkinton's right now in the lead in lane four. That's Ritesh Rajanigan. Zach Holbrow in lane two, who just anchored or just uh, Swam the 500 and up top, that is. They're going to be close Coco. here to over Sherburn. Oh, I got an unofficial at 141 41. Uh, but I always have a trigger finger. So I'm probably a little off, but Hopkins will go f first, second. One, two. And pick up some points. So center of the pool, the relay of Aditya Dutta, Grace Cavanaugh, Mary Lauren Burke, Ritesh Rajanigan. Placing first, and then Ainsley Worrell, Tyler Fallon, Ray Lurie, Lucas, and Zach Holbrow taking second. Nice showing up top by Cassie White, Peyton Salyards, Kevin Goo, and Sierra Swissel. So nice swims. There is going to be a second heat of the two free relay. In lane two, we're going to have Aya Baba, Deidre Belger, Holly Burns, Mia Carboni. In lane four, we're going to have Marina Genzana. Olivia J, Kelly Cohane, and Leah Patrick. And then up top, we're going to have Beatrice Bonacher, Kayla McCann, Carolina Russman, and Ryan DeLeva. So Hopkinton putting three relays out. We're also going to have some second heats, it looks like, in the 100 back and in the 100 brass. So a couple of uh, extra heats here tonight. Kids trying to get some times. Coach putting some extra swimmers out. So heat number two, two free relay. Heat number two. Dover Shortborn is going to counter in one, three, and five. Center of the pool, Marina Genzana, Ayababa closes up, and Beatrice Bonner up top. So in the center of the pool, that's Genzana. Across the turn to the first 50, Jazana, Ayababa, Beatrice Bonitor. Straight across. Nice looking swim in the center of the pool by Marina Jinzana. She's going to turn it over to Olivia Jay. 
WJ clean start in the center of the pool. Close as I said, Steve the Belger getting ready to go in the water. And up top in lane six, that's Kayla McCann. On pace still in the lead, center of the pool, Olivia J. <laughs> Kayla McCann up top, closest to us in lane two, that's Deirdre Belger. Being challenged in lane four, that's Olivia J. Half a body length lead, Dover Sherburne trying to close. That's the nice thing about having Dover Sherburne having entries in the second heat. It's going to push everybody. Absolutely. In the water now, in the center of the pool, that's Kaylee Cohane. Up top, or closest to us in lane two, now in the water is Holly Burns. Up top in lane six, in the water is Carolina Russman. Neck and neck in the center of the pool, it's Hopkinson's Kaylee Cohane, and that is Dover Sherbourne. It's going to come down to the last 50 here. Kaylee Cohane, Holly Burns in lane two, Carolina Russman. Swimmers are going to go in at the same time. That is Leah Patrick. Great start by Leah Patrick. Center of the pool, it's Dover Sherborne, Leah Patrick. Closing close in second lane two is Mia Carboni trying to chew some water up. And up top, that's Ryan DeLeva. Leah Patrick, great wall. Leah Patrick, half a body she came off lead. Way ahead on the turn. It's a great turn. Close to stops Mia Carboni trying to get herself in a position. That's going to be a win in the center of the pool, Leah Patrick. Dover Sherborne, Mia Carboni comes in for third place. And then up top, that is Ryan DeLeva. Dover Sherborne still with two relays in the water. Nice swims by these young swimmers. Chance to get in the water. Swimming. Yeah, and it's hard when you're a bigger team and you're doing these extra heats. You're, you're just swimming against the same kids all the time, but you saw what a little competition there did. A lot of push, a lot of push, a lot of drive. Coach should be happy with the showing tonight. Unofficial court score, Coach. I've got 82-57. Hopkinton 12 points away from that magic number 94. See what they can do in the next couple of races. They are strong in the backstroke and the breaststroke, or at least strong in the breaststroke. Backstroke, not so much. Uh, they're coming around. He's got a little different lineup tonight, so we'll see what they can do in the backstroke, which we're getting ready for Abby Fisher, Colin Thine, and Blake Reiner. El Dolfino, Colin Thine in the center of the pool. So we'll see what we can do here. And then he's got... Uh, a heavy lineup of the 100 breast with Sam Cody, Alex Metzokas, and Allison Fu. So, Coach hoping to close it out in the next two races. And then we'll have some fun with the 400. There will be two heats in both the 100 back and the 100 breast. A lot of nice decorations. Around here tonight, these underclassmen have done a really nice job for their senior class. Good start, center of the pool, that's Colin Fine. Lean two, Abby Fisher, and up top, that is Blake Reiner. El Dolfino, Colin Fine. Slight lead as I go six across into the first turn, that's Briner, Fine. And Fisher, Abby Fisher. Fine with a slight lead in the center of the pool. Colin Fine, senior captain. Colin's head is, is fixated. He isn't moving back and forth, and that's the key in this backstroke. Let the shoulders rotate back and forth. Good kick off the wall. Nice Good dolphin turn. kick. Nice wall there, too, by Blake Griner up in lane six, trying to get himself in the second position and challenge for first. So it's going to be a close race coming in as we've got four across the pool, five across the pool up top. Keep your eyes on the center of the pool, lane four and six. Colin Fine opening up a body length lead. Fighting for second, that's Blake Greiner. Greiner moved himself in the second position. It's going to be Fine, Greiner, Dover Sherbourne, Abby Fisher. That nice race all by Sherbourne. Abby. Yeah. One, two, five, one, two, four for Hopkinton. That might be. Uh, that might be just enough to just enough to take the uh, to take the meat here. Sure. I've got it unofficially 94 to 61. Your unofficial is good enough for me, Coach. 100 backstroke key number two. We're going to see Sean Haley, Kate Legassi, and Holly Burns. 
didn't know Kate was a backstroker. Yeah, I don't think she knows either. We're gonna I was see. Gonna that. say, that is not backstroke is not all a gassy <laughs> treat. No, <laughs> no, it's not. They like swimming on their stomachs. Yep. <laughs> but then again, uh, she swam. Uh, she swam breaststroke the other night. That was interesting, Coach. That's even scarier. Yeah, you've seen her breaststroke. She yep. made forward progress. Very pleased. Let's get a watch on this. I'm kind of curious, actually. So 100 backstrokes, Sean Haley, Kate Legassi, and Holly Burns. Let's see what this looks like. They have a Sherborne counters in leans, th uh, three and five only. Closest to us, that's Sean Haley out to a quick quick start. Kate Legassi in second place. Holly I, Burns up top. I got to be honest, Kev, she looks pretty, she pretty look sharp good. as a backstroker. Ooh, they got a great turn nice off the turn. wall. Good dolphin kick, Sean Haley, Kate Legassi. Dover Sherborne up top, that's Holly Burns. Backstroke is such a tough stroke. You want to get your shoulders rotating back and forth. You got to keep your hips up on the surface. Steady kick. And it's it's kind of a trap because your head's exposed. You don't want to be hyperventilating. You still want to kind of control your breathing. She's now going to pick it up a little bit, take her teammate into the wall. So Sean Haley, Kate Legassi are going to take the final turn together. And up top, that's Holly Burns starting to close in a little bit. So it's Haley, Legassi. Let's see what we've got here. Nice long stroke by Kate Legassi in the center of the pool. Sean Haley looks good. Legassi's got a half a body length lead. And up top, Holly Burns. She's moved herself into third position. Kate Legassi, center of the pool. Coming in at a 113. That might go on the fridge. Not bad. That, that will. Right up there with Kevin Legassi's 103 breaststroke from a year ago. Blistering. Good swim. Good form in the center of the pool. Having a little fun with, with Kate, we are. Sean Haley, a nice swim as well. Holly Burns, good looking swim. We're gonna get ourselves ready for the 100 breaststroke. But as, a, as the coach looks at next year, you know, some of these swims, we don't remember those, we don't forget those times. And uh, you think of a kid with the, put in a random event and you're like, you know, that might be something you could help us in down the road. Well, it brings to mind years ago was Alex Carboni all of a sudden came around with a 52 out of nowhere. Hunter Backstroke, I think, his senior year. And, you know, you never know. Somebody builds off of it. And, um, you know, those swims, uh, technique gets better, body changes a little bit. So a lot of good opportunities moving forward. So, you know, and she's only she's six seconds off the sectionals. It's not bad. That's not bad. No. You cut a second each meet. Considering I think she swam it three times, it's not bad at all. So let's get ourselves ready for the 100 breaststroke. Closest to us, that's. Sam the Man Bun Cody, Alex Matsukas in the center pool, and the Foo Fighter, Allison Fu, up in lane six. This is like the diving event for Hopkin, and Hopkin and breaststrokers the past couple of years have been loaded. And uh, Alex is going to get a push here, but he has come on so strong in two years. He's got a great stroke, good pull out. Throws those arms out in front of him, the hands out in front of him. So we've got Matsukas in the center of the pool. We've got Cody trying to hold him to second place. Matsukas takes a turn in the lead. Body length lead. Cody, quick turn off the wall. He's got himself in second position. Good wall by the Dover Sherborne swimmer. Sam Cody, seeing what he can do. Now it's Matsukas, center of the pool. Half a body length lead, body length lead. Sam is an accomplished cross country runner. And this is where you're going to see his legs. His, his stroke is his kick. So that's Matsukas in the center of the pool. Cody, Cody pushing hard. He's going to put himself in second position. Matsukas, Cody for a 1-2. And up top, that's going to be the Foo Fighter, Allison Foo. Nice swims all the way around. Unofficial time on that, Coach. Did you catch that or no? I missed that one. We'll give it like a 104, 105 maybe? I'd say 104, yeah. easily. That's a good-looking swim. We're going to have a second heat here in the 100 breaststroke. Let me just find out who we got. We're going to have Sierra Slushel in lane two, Tyler Fallon in lane four, and Carolina, Carolina Rusman up in lane six. 
Again, coach getting some other swims in because Dover Shoreborn with a larger team also running some second heats. This is nice to see. So unofficially, we think Hopkinton has won this meet. 94-61 after the backstroke. So, you know, Hopkinton there, there was a time position. when the Hopkinton was, you know, the Dover Sherbert of extra heats. A lot of kids, yeah. maybe not the quality, and uh, it just takes time. A lot of good young swimmers to build from. Of course, the season far from over. Got a lot of swimming left to do. So, second heat of the 100 breaststrokes. Center of the pool, Tyler Fallon. Closest to us here, Slushel. Up top, that's Carolina Russman. That's Tyler Fallon in the center of the pool, turning. Dover Shoreborn, lane one. Out to an early lead. Center of the pool, it's Tyler Fallon, Sierra Slushel. And up top, Carolina Russman. So this Dover Sherman swimmer in lane one is really impressing his coaches being way out. Yep. Something they'll remember for next couple of meets. Good strong stroke in lane one. He opens up a three body length lead. You also want to note uh, athletic director D. King has been at the meet the whole night, was here for the senior presentations. And you know, you see her at all the sporting events. Uh, you see her tweeting out updates. Uh, one thing that I think she's really accomplished is the athletes know her and they see her at things and they appreciate it. She's got a good pulse on the student athletes. Athletes and parents, we see her, we do see her around a lot. She's very visible. Dee's done a really nice job. She's over Sherborne, Fleen one takes first. Sierra Slussel, Tyler Fallon. And up top, a battle for fifth position. Carolina Rustman, see if she can Sprint to the finish, he's trying. Coming in, that is Russman with the touch out. Nice push there at the end. Like you said, when you got somebody swimming next to you, it forces you to push. You know, and I remember the last time I saw a swimmer on that lane in the breaststroke getting a fifth place in a huge meet we didn't expect. Mm -hmm. And it set up a relay. Absolutely. Digging back into the archives of Hopkinton swimming, fellow swimming. As we get ourselves ready for the final event of the evening, folks, the 400 free relay. Hopkinton's going to put Grace Cavanaugh, Ritesh Rajanigan, Zach Holbrow, and Blake Briner. Keep an eye on those guys in the lane number two. Also challenged by Tyler Holbrow, Alyssa Fisher, Colin Thine, and Alex Matsukis in lane four. And then Andrew Deleva, Fletch the Catch Clark. The Merch man, Connor Murchie and Cassie White. Cassie White anchoring. She's had a nice showing tonight, Cassie White. Some swims that have caught our eyes. So this is it. Yeah, I'm curious if the coach put Grace in the first uh, spot here. She just barely missed qualifying for sectionals. And let's see if she can uh, maybe get another shot again. If you're the first person in a relay and you get that qualifying time, yeah. this counts. Get an unofficial clock running on these guys. Leading off closest to us, that's Grace Cavanaugh, center of the pool, Tyler Holbrow, and up top, Andrew DeLeva. Cavanaugh is out to a nice start along with Holbrow and DeLeva. Good long strokes in the center and middle of the pool. Cavanaugh opens up a nice little lead, followed closely by Tyler Holbrow. Grace has a real nice stroke in this 100. Not like the two on the free relay really, where it was a little more of an increased windmill. She's going to save a little bit. So Kavanaugh, Tyler Holbrow, Andrew DeLeva is up top in lane six. Hopkinton, one, two, and a battle for fourth position. Hopkinton by our scores and calculations has won the meet already. This is all for fun at this point, all for time. So, Kavanaugh, Tyler Holbrow unofficially coming in. They Late. both went about a one double low. Good swims. Gonna turn it over in the center of the pool. That's Alyssa Fisher, Ritesh Rosanigan, closest to us. 
Where Tesh come on quite a bit too, Coach. Good looking swimmer, fly, breaststroke, freestyle. Yeah, he put a lot of time in uh, after his freshman year and he was surrounded by some real strong swimmers and he tried to make a commitment to getting himself better as he became an upperclassman. And you can see the results right now. Absolutely. So Ritesh Pazanigan up top in lean six. That's Pete, that's uh, Fletcher Clark. So you've got um, close to us, Ritesh Pazanigan, Alyssa Fisher, Fletch Clark in the, in the pool. A lot of tears from that Hopkinton sidelines. Over on the other far side of the pool, Ritesh Pazanigan, he's going to turn it over to Zach Holbrow. Center of the pool, El Dolfino. Colin Fine, great start by Colin Fine in the center of the pool, Zach Holbrow. And up top, that's going to be the Merch man, Connor Murchie. Two-man race, center of the pool, Hopkinton. Zach Holbrow, Colin Fine. El Dolfino, there you go. The call goes out. Yes, it does. And I'm sure Colin was uh, happy about his win tonight on senior night in the backstroke. Absolutely. But he would, uh, he'd like to come off this four and a free rally with his uh, best friend and captain there, Zach, and give him a little push. And he's starting to make a little run on he him is. here. Not going to make it easy for him. Holbrow, fine. We heard the chance for Old Dolfino. They're going to turn it over. This is all about pride here. As Briner's going to go in the water first. Alex Matsukis coming off of the breaststroke. Nice start by Matsukis in the center of the pool. And up top, Murchie. He's going to turn it over to Cassie White. Two man race in the middle of the pool. That's Briner in lean two being chased by Matsukis. Matsukis trying to get himself even coming into the final term, but Briner will have nothing of it. Blake Briner. Nice swim. And Finer had a little extra rest where uh, Alex just came off the win in the breaststroke. Absolutely. Reiner in lane two. Opening up a little bit. Up top, that's Cassie White. She's pushing hard. You know, with, with Ainsley Worrell and Abby Fisher and Grace Kavanaugh all graduating, you know, Grace could step right in next year. Absolutely. So the win in the center of the pool there, lane two, that break Greiner, followed by Alex Matsukis. Hopkinton goes one, two. Dover Sherborne takes third. That was that uh, freshman swimmer for Dover Sherborne. She just split a 55-1 wow. in the back end of that really. Wow. That's a good swim. Cassie White with a nice swim up top. Clearly moved her. Relay in the fifth position. Good swims all around. There will be no second heat. As this meet comes to an end, we're going to wait for the official scores. The uh, head scorer, head official, Kelly Pierce, going to turn it around and make some announcements as she gets her final, final information for the final heat. Coach, this has really been a pleasure. It's nice having another voice in the booth. Feel uh, free to come back anytime. I am looking forward to it. This has been great. The view up here, I've never see? never been able to see what it's like. <laughs> it's, it's a whole different world. You see a lot more. Yeah, well, that's welcome to my world. This is what you know we comment on up here. You know, if I go back to coaching high school, I'm gonna have some coaches up in a booth like in a football game. It's not a bad idea. We're gonna start the headsets. Just gotta, you know, just gotta ask me. I'll come back. I mean, you called me Belichickian at the last meet I coached. <laughs> I still remember that quote. Well, you know, I call him like I see him. Uh, also, the jump off the ground, which there was air under me. There, there was. There yeah. wasn't a lot, but there we, was. We had to go to slow mo, but yes. Uh, it's the replay show. So we're gonna wait and see what we got for the teams for the their final uh, their final cheers. Jeff, Coach so Libby. both teams are gonna have one loss now in the league. Uh, Dover Sherman yeah. beat Hollis and Medway and Norton. I know Hopkins had one loss against Ashland. Ashland. Uh, Dover Sherman's up and coming. They've been a tough uh, program over the past couple of years. They're coming up. Here comes the final score. Final score, 96. Hopkinton, 94. 94-86. A nice win by Hopkinton. Good swims tonight. Good senior night.
A lot of great swims. And they got, you know, they got three weeks of meets left. Uh, get ready for the league meet, which is Super Bowl Sunday. And uh, try to get as many kids in the postseason as possible. Uh, some of these, this is obviously a tougher <laughs> league meet. They had to work for this one. It came off second half a little strong. And there'll be some weaker meets with some of these other kids who had good meets tonight will get in. And obviously some tougher ones coming up. Uh, I'm not sure in the league who's left that they really have to uh, be watching for. Swimming's not the kind of sport where someone can just show up all of a sudden like a basketball game and have a great game. You know, you can only swim so fast. Very true. So it's, uh, you know, stay healthy. Try to get through the winter illness that always hits every team. Uh, get kids qualified and, uh, you know, make some more memories. Oh, the cash money cheer. Cash so money. Yeah. I like that one. So we had... Uh, up the pool, down the pool, and then we went uh, bees, bees, we like honey. We think Dover Shore Boyne is cash money. You gotta love that one. All staples in the uh, killer cheer book. Absolutely. As the teams will go ahead and shake hands and spread whatever germs they haven't spread to one another during the regular season. A lot, a lot, of, a lot of chlorine, thankfully. Yeah, that is. Well, I'll tell you, Coach, speaking of the uh, league meet, if, you, uh, if you're around that Sunday morning, we will be announcing from uh, high above our perch here in the pool at Keith Tech, so if you feel like stopping by. Well, let's see what happens this Sunday. Yeah. And then maybe the next Sunday, and then Absolutely. I'll go from there. You still got plenty of time. The meet's over before, you know, the, before the, the big game, so. True, but it was kind of nice to have the morning free for a year and stay up and enjoy the game. It's very true. Instead of being up early, but. Uh, very true. Oh, I'd love to be here watching, and uh, I, I maintain a lot of friendships with the coaches in the league, and. Uh, Tri Valley League is, is a special swim league, and uh, you know, you know, Kevin. We started in 2010, and to create your own league in this state in this day and age is tough when yeah. things are getting cut. And you saw it tonight. You saw one of the best divers in the state, some of the best swimmers in the state. Uh, Ashland has one of the top boys teams in the state. TVL swimming is is here. It's strong. It's good, uh, and it's not going anywhere. And it's growing. Still, there's a girl on this Dover Sherman team from Millis. She swims unofficial, but they're hoping to get some more Millis kids and combine with a Bellingham. And, you know, we added Norwood, uh, which has two great coaches, obviously Dedham last year. So it's, it's here. And they look good. Kids look good. We're going to wrap it up here. Coach Brian King joining us here in the booth. Kevin Legassi, Raj Rajanigan up there on the, uh, on the uh, camera as usual. Hopkins team with a 94-86 win over Dover Sherborne. They go 4-1 in the TBL. And we will be back the next time we're going to broadcast. It's going to be at the TBL League Championship meet. So until then, wish you all the best in a warm January. Coach, thank you again. Really enjoyed it. Thanks a lot, Kevin. All right, good night, folks.